Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Coming off a beautiful Thursday night, 2-0 in NFL, 1-0 in college football. But we're putting that to the side because we got a loaded Saturday here. In this video, we got a repeat of the Big 12 championship game from last year. Baylor, Oklahoma State, let's go. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Source. Hey, get the sewers. All right, Oklahoma State on the road at Baylor here. Line opened up Baylor Bears laying two and a half points here. Early action all over Baylor. 78% of the money on the Bears as of Tuesday morning. So the books do take a little bit of Oklahoma State money in and the line does drop from two and a half down to two, but only stays there for a day or two because here we are on Friday night. Line is back up to Baylor minus two and a half. So let's cap this game. If you subscribe to this channel, you already know the first step. We're running the numbers through the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Baylor minus 12.8. 86 so huge lean on Baylor there. All right, let's run through a quick breakdown and Spencer Sanders and that Oklahoma State offense is off to a hot start this year. Through three games, he's got 916 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, just one interception. He also adds 110 yards rushing and three rushing touchdowns to that. But now he has to travel to Baylor and this Baylor defense has been a nightmare for Spencer Sanders over the course of his career. Last year, Spencer Sanders saw the Baylor defense twice. In those two games, he had a combined total of one touchdown touchdown pass and seven interceptions for whatever reason Kevin Aranda and this Baylor defense just has ha have had Spencer Sanders number so I fully expect Baylor's defense to show up here they got a top 25 defense they're ranked number 22 in DFEI they're also ranked sixth in the country against the run allowing just I think it's 2.5 yards per carry very very good against the run but it's not all sunshine and rainbows for Baylor because you got Oklahoma State coming to town and if you remember this Polk defense was top three a top three defense in the country last year. Yeah, this year they're not quite on that level, but this is still a top 25 defense for sure. Blake Shapin is off to a solid job at quarterback for Baylor, but like I said last week, we still haven't seen much from him through four games. He has yet to reach 20 completed passes in a game one. His completion percentage is chilling at 69%, but when under pressure, that number drops all the way down to 41%. So in my opinion, there's still a question mark next to Blake Shapin's name. This Baylor offense has definitely been a run first unit. They use Shapin sparingly. They keep him out of trouble. They don't ask him to do much other than just protect the football. They may not have a choice this week against Oklahoma State because that defense is good, like I said. And if that's the case, we don't know what we're gonna see. We don't know what this Baylor offense looks like if Blake Shapin has to drop back to pass 35, 40 times a game. We don't know if that is gonna result in mistakes. We don't know if he's gonna rise up to the challenge. Like I said, it's still a question mark. Now, the good news for Blake Shapin and the Baylor offense is this Oklahoma State pass rush is not nearly what it was last year. Last year, they were third in the country in sack rate. Third. This year, they're all the way down at 57. So. Although the defense is still putting up great numbers for Oklahoma State, the pass rush just hasn't been there. I'm kind of talking in circles at this point. There's a lot of angles to play here. I think top to bottom, Oklahoma State has the more talented team here. I mean, take last year, the two games against Baylor, they split. Um, Oklahoma State won the regular season, Baylor won the Big 12 championship. If you take away Spencer Sanders' seven interceptions in those two games, Oklahoma State wins both of them by probably three scores. Now, has Spencer Sanders fully fixed his turnover problems? He seems to have to start this year. Just one interception, 10 touchdown passes. He's off to a great start. If that's the case, Oklahoma should cruise to a victory here, even on the road. Also, I think it's time we start seeing some Blake Shapin mistakes. Now, full disclosure, I said we would start to see some Blake Shapin mistakes last week against Iowa State. I took the Cyclones, took a loss there. Uh, Blake Shapin made zero mistakes, but I really do think against Oklahoma State, we will see one or two big ones. So I'm on the pokes here. Give me Oklahoma State plus two and a half. This is definitely not one of my favorites. This definitely will not make the top seven bets um, on the ticket, but it might make the VIP ticket for a half unit. We'll see. If anything changes with this bet, I will keep you posted on Twitter. So give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you want the full ticket, the bet of the day, top seven bets, underdogs of the day, parlays of the day, that kind of stuff. Uh, make sure you visit kylekerms.com or download the Sauce Network app. College football Saturday, week four, let's go. Um, loaded, loaded slate. Let's, let's find the value, pick our spots, and reel in some units. I'll talk to you on Twitter.